artist, musician, performer, entertainer, singer, musical act. These words are mostly used interchangeably by music listeners, and because of that, conversations related to these terms get a little intense. Every conversation about this is basically a debate about definitions and specifications. For example, a musician is someone who creates music, a musician is someone who plays music, or is a musician someone who engages in any kind of musical activity, whether it's singing, playing an instrument, or making songs. What about a performer? A performer is someone who entertains people by acting, singing, dancing, or playing music. But not every entertainer is a performer. Or are they? And what about people known by their strong performing abilities, but not really by extraordinary live vocals? Is singing live essential to be a performer? What about an artist, in the musical sense of the word? Is a musical artist any type of person who brings music to an audience? Or is a musical artist someone who makes musical art, aka music, by composing, interpreting, and performing? Can a performer who is not a songwriter but instead a singer and interpreter also be considered an artist? The specifications of all of these words made this video too difficult to write because I'm scared of not clarifying every time I say these words, and that is just not ideal. But at the end of the day, I think we can all distinguish that people who bring music to an audience can do so in different ways. And whether you want to call them musicians, artists, or my favorite neutral term, musical acts, I believe that pointing out their differences is not a hateful thing to do. But of course, K-pop is such an interesting and unique world. And mentioning what these musical acts do and don't do can be seen as insulting, even when we're talking about the most basic truths. My channel is about BTS and everything that surrounds them. And one common topic on my channel, as well as K-pop spaces in general, is why BTS? Why are they the biggest to come from the K-pop industry? More importantly, why do the biggest acts in the history of K-pop, before or after BTS, were and continue to be unable to go mainstream and or be considered serious artists. Of course, there are a lot of factors and I've talked about many of them, but the difference between being a performer and an artist is one of the most sensitive factors for K-pop fans, because saying that the only real artists in an industry full of performers are BTS sounds too snobbish, it sounds too extreme, and it sounds like the opinion of someone with tunnel vision. I'm not here to argue that. I do not believe that BTS are the only ones in the K-pop industry who are more than just performers or interpreters. Musical talent is expressed and can be perceived in so many different ways. What I do argue is that the musical artistry BTS does is mostly different from the musical artistry that K-pop groups do. It's not unrelated, but it's not the same. And yes, I do believe that all K-pop acts do the same kind of musical artistry, not the same kind of musical genre or concept but they all express themselves musically in the same way. Even the most rebellious and innovative K-pop acts maintain the status quo overall. I think it's not a part of the society. I think it's a bit different from the people who are saying that they're saying that. And I believe that aside from personality, talent, relatability, and the underdog story, the type of artistry BTS does, which is different from the norm, is one of the reasons why BTS became truly mainstream. It doesn't matter if you think an artist is any musical act or if you think an artist is someone who makes music and musical performances at a certain standard that is considered art. The type of musical artistry BTS does is being held to a different and more complex standard than the majority of K-pop, by the general public, by fans, and by BTS themselves. Whether you like this second definition of artist or not, BTS is being constantly associated and judged to the standards of that definition. In other words, as soon as anyone analyzes them for real, it feels easy and natural to consider BTS artists. But that doesn't happen with K-pop acts. They can be considered every other title as well as artists, as long as it's from the first definition. This sounds harsh, but it really shouldn't be. This is the reality for a lot of musical spheres, not just K-pop. So let's clarify what this means. The list I mentioned at the beginning included the terms artist, performer, entertainer, musical act, singer, and musician. 
In K-pop, a musical act is usually called an idol, and this term can be used interchangeably with all of these terms, but it also comes with its own definitions and rules. Of course, we can debate the specifics of the definition, but just to have an idea, the most popular and basic definition cited to Routledge Handbook of Celebrity Studies, The New York Times, The New Yorker, and Hanka University Press, I would say it's pretty accurate. An idol refers to a type of celebrity working in the field of K-pop in fandom culture in South Korea, either as a member of a group or as a solo act. K-pop idols are characterized by the highly manufactured star system that they are produced by and debuted under, as well as their tendency to represent a hybridized convergence of visuals, music, fashion, and dance. They usually work for a mainstream entertainment agency and have undergone extensive training in dance, vocals, and foreign language. Idols maintain a carefully curated public image and social media presence, and dedicate significant time and resources to building relationships with fans through concerts and meetups. Now, I know that some K-pop fans would say that an idol is just an artist part of the K-pop industry, the same way a lot of people would refer to any of these terms loosely. It's all the same, it's not that deep they would say. But I think the majority of K-pop fans would agree that this is the general basis for being a K-pop idol. Sure, there may be an idol who has a less curated image and another idol who works for their own entertainment agency and another idol who doesn't care about fashion and another idol who doesn't dance at all. But at the end of the day, these are the overall rules. These rules create a very strict artistic framework that is very hard to break away from. Before I explain the K-pop framework, I want to clarify that not every Korean musical act is K-pop. Just like in other parts of the world, there are Korean singers who make popular music, but not every Korean pop singer is a K-pop idol. To be a K-pop idol, they have to be trained by the K-pop training system, be signed to a K-pop label, participate in K-pop events, and overall follow the structure and rules of the K-pop framework. I believe that the easiest way to recognize this framework is by watching K-pop music shows. K-pop music shows are a staple in K-pop, and here you can see it best. What you notice first is the loud, amazing visuals, the fashion, style, aesthetics, and beauty of the idols. This is so important that most times the idols pose to the camera before they start singing. I've seen live performances with introductions of minutes of just posing to the camera before I listen to the song. Idols also pose at the end of the performance. The second most shocking thing is the choreography, which is more than just a dance choreography. These idols have practiced very hard to put on a performance, and you notice it in the smallest details. Communication with the public, or mostly the camera, and facial expressions are also part of the choreography. Even the casual wink is rehearsed. The fans also synchronize with the idols by chanting their names and only parts of the song in an organized way, creating an overall synchronized performance. The fanchants are a part of the third element, which is what you hear, the music and the vocals. Although these are considered live performances, K-pop music shows and K-pop live performances in general are known for having a very loud and consistent backtrack. Depending on the moves of the choreography, the idol will play back or sing on top of the backtrack. The reason for a backtrack is a strong one. K-pop choreographies are so specific, technical, and intense that K-pop idols are more justified than other performers for having a backtrack overpowering their live vocals. So with a backtrack, the idol can choose when to sing live on top of their own pre-recorded vocals and when to playback, while fans by the overall illusion, because whether they are singing or not, their mics are on. We can listen to the actual microphone hitting the idol's face or jewelry, for example. This feels more real than the obvious playback, especially for K-pop fans who are used to these type of performances. But for someone who is new or unfamiliar with the way things work in K-pop, the lack of raw vocals are very obvious and off-putting. 
So an amazing K-pop performance for a K-pop fan can feel disingenuous, off-putting, and the complete opposite of a spontaneous and real for the mainstream public. It doesn't matter if this audience is the global mainstream public or the Korean public who prefers non-K-pop pop music. With BTS's entrance to the mainstream music industry, which I'll talk about later, other musical factors are now at least talked about. Songwriting, raw vocals, and relatable personalities are a little more present in K-pop. But again, there is a void in the musical aspect. This doesn't mean that every K-pop song is bad or that every K-pop act lacks natural, spontaneous stage presence. But there usually is a lack of connection between the music and the musical act. In a way, non-K-pop listeners perceive the musical expression of an artist as the artist's personality. Whether they wrote their songs or not, their music is their self-expression. It's who they are. You feel that. You see that it makes sense. But when a K-pop act's artistic direction is all over the place, and also when you see that outside of the stage, the performer would never say or come up with what they sing in their songs, then the artistic connection is not there. If the performance is one of the good ones, I may even believe you when you are on stage. But I believe that that is an act, not you. That is why the ultimate musical expression of a K-pop act is to be a performer and interpreter. To become the complicated second definition of artist, the K-pop act would have to break the barriers of the K-pop framework. They would have to go against the rules of the industry that made them. And in such a control industry, that just doesn't happen. I want to clarify that being only a performer is not a bad thing. Like this random comment I found says, ballet dancers don't choreograph their own dances. Opera singers don't write their own operas. Actors don't write and direct their own performances. Like in K-pop, there are exceptions, but these arts are not really about that. These arts are about the artistic talent and training. When I perceive it like this, I can appreciate K-pop performers a lot more. Performing and showcasing an image are art forms. Calling someone a performer is a compliment because performing is difficult. And actually, the general public usually associates performing with putting on a show. Musical acts who lack depth, intent, star power, practice, and intensity are called out for not being performers. The general public complains. They are not performing, they're just standing there singing as opposed to phrases like, they are a full-on performer. That is how you put on a show. So to be a good artistic K-pop idol is to be a good performer. I personally love a lot of performers and interpreters, and I believe that the global general public does as well. As long as the performer puts on stage a powerful performance, as long as the interpreter interprets something, in such an oversaturated and repetitive industry, it's normal to see bad performers. If you're just giving cute or pretty, it does feel empty and boring. But even if a performance is not boring, I believe that one of the main reasons why K-pop's growth continues declining globally is because the mainstream general public is hesitant to accept a music industry in which music as a personal expression is not the priority. Even if it's the most machine-made electro-pop song, it has to feel like it belongs to the artist. But the K-pop system itself prevents this from happening. The good and unique performers, vocalists, or songwriters willing to make music their personal expression are hard to find because they are usually one member hidden in a big group hidden in an industry with more groups doing the exact same type of performance. Yes, cute, sexy, and badass are different K-pop concepts, but I'll continue seeing them again and again and again in the exact same format. So what makes any K-pop group special? I believe that the K-pop industry, along with its framework and rules, are fundamentally designed to fail in the mainstream music industry. But so are ballet, opera, and musical theater. That doesn't make them less. That makes them their own unique world with its own rules and ways of appreciating it. For example, for me, one of the most off-putting factors from K-pop performances is the lack of the idol's connection to the audience. Not the camera, but the actual people there looking at the performance. I can totally excuse and even like when idols pretty much ignore the audience in K-pop shows. But festivals and concerts are about people, and I've seen way too many performances where the idols don't connect with the people there. 
they are still performing for a camera, whether it is imaginary or not. They are so used to being in or out of frame that when it's their turn to not be on camera, they forget that in a festival, I can still see them. The little lazy waves used to infuriate me more than anything else. However, when I started watching cable performances the same way I watch ballet performances, I understood. I don't judge an album for a musical the same way I would an album by a mainstream artist for mainstream audiences. It's okay if an album or singer for a musical is not nominated to Album of the Year or Artist of the Year at the Billboard Music Awards, because those categories are mostly about mainstream success and audiences. And sure, there are songs from musicals and K-pop that have gone viral. But forcing these arts into the mainstream music industry, especially as a whole, I believe is almost impossible today. The mainstream public has rejected the K-pop framework too many times for the K-pop industry to not get the hint. <laughs> So back to the original question, why BTS? Why did they actually become part of the mainstream music industry? BTS started slowly breaking into the mainstream music industry around 2017. And over the years, BTS has never denied being K-pop idols. But fans notice an artistic difference between BTS and K-pop acts. Suga has mentioned that K-pop is not a genre, it's integrated content. Like I mentioned before, this integrated content contains visual, fashion, dance, and music. RM has also said that although we can be annoyed by the K-pop label immediately put into BTS, for him, it's a premium label that guarantees a high standard of quality. These two quotes are used by K-pop fans to prove that BTS are K-pop. Othering them, like I've pretty much done in this entire video, goes against BTS's own words. However, I believe these quotes are correct. K-pop is integrated content that I know will come with high standards of quality. Sometimes I watch performances by new, unknown K-pop groups and think, Although this song won't make me a fan, this choreography, fashion, and visuals are way better than most Western boy bands and girl groups. Even my favorite Western girl group doesn't synchronize like that. Like RM said, this quality is ensured in K-pop. That's what the training is for. This same quality of dance, fashion, and visuals is expected from BTS, and we see it all the time. So yes, just like the best K-pop performers, BTS has those factors in the back. They started in the K-pop training system to be part of the K-pop industry, but now they are more than what they train for. This is extremely unusual because like I've said, the K-pop performers would have to break the K-pop framework that created them. But weirdly, BTS has done this in many ways, since pre-debuted through their entire careers. The first BTS members had songwriting and producing abilities that K-pop labels were never looking for. These abilities related to music creation, plus the K-pop training system, made them the artists they are today. On the other hand, other members of BTS had performing abilities, but now, with the permission of their label and the inspiration from the composers, they are full-on artists. For example, the Taeyeon that debuted in 2013 as a good performer, it's not the Taeyeon today, a musician and lyricist. The Suga that debuted in 2013 as a good songwriter and producer is not the Suga today. A performer and entertainer is strong enough to carry by himself an entire show-stopping tour. When you have not just good but amazing performers who perform perform and musicians who compose compose, then it's understandable why after a few years they all become full-on undeniable artists. To do this, all the members and the K-pop label itself had to break the K-pop framework in which they were born. They didn't leave the industry completely because they still do the integrated content essential to K-pop. But BTS did break the rules, the artistic rules. Whether it was because their label allowed them to, or because they were not welcome in the K-pop industry and were forced to look outside the framework, or because the members looked at each other and were motivated to become full artists, or a combination of all of these circumstances, BTS did break everything. They did the unexpected. They grew not just as performers, but as artists. So just like K-pop, BTS has larger-than-life music videos but they are the reflection of the members' ideas and situations they came up with or are going through. The videos are their artistic expression. 
Just like K-pop has defined K-pop concepts, BTS has concepts as well. They are just not the typical cute, sexy, badass K-pop concepts. They make conceptual albums. They do, not their label. Their conceptual albums are their artistic expression. Just like with K-pop, BTS's intense choreography requires them to have backtracks, but imperfect raw vocals are maybe 98% of the performance. Their performances are their artistic expression. And unlike K-pop, BTS's music feels uniquely them. Sure, they put on a big show for their performances, but they get off the stage and you notice that they use music as their expression. There is never such a harsh and a strong disconnection between them and their music, as there is with K-pop acts. BTS feel like people in their music and like artists in their everyday lives. Interesting, fun, and strong personalities are also part of K-pop, but they have to be compiled through multiple interviews and behind-the-scenes content. So, of course, fans fall in love with K-pop idols as well, but their personalities are not in their music because that is not their music. They didn't write it, and they didn't choose it. Just like a performer sings, dances, and acts in a musical, a K-pop idol sings, dances, and acts in a K-pop show. Again, this is not a bad thing. This requires a high level of talent and rehearsal. It's just that their music is not who they are. And no matter how complicated and detailed your definition of artist is, that is what BTS are. You and I.